Okay, hi. Um, so welcome to Singa Cup 2020. So uh, my name is Jun from Jupiter Football. I will be the moderator for today's uh, discussion. And and to be honest, today it's really uh, it, we are, we are delighted to actually have some of our old boys back together again. So today we have got uh, three of them. So we have got uh, Hilarious Brian from Indonesia. So Brian uh, actually used to be the Golden Boots winner in one of the age group. Then uh, we have got um, Billy, Billy Catapolis from Australia. And we also have uh, Iksan Fundy. Okay, Iksan Fundy. So currently in um, Norway. So thank you very much. I know it's really very hard for us to get everybody together. Different time zone, but I'm glad that we were able to make it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so um, I will just start off with the very first question. So, you know, like... Um, because all, all of you, the three of you, are actually the old boys of Singa Cup. You know, now looking back at the Singa Cup tournament that you have participated, so how did that tournament actually help you in your football development? So maybe we can start from uh, Billy first. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Look, it was, I think it's a long time ago now. I think 2011, the, the, the starting oh, year of the yes. Singa Cup. So you guys made me dig back into the archives a little bit. It's been uh, very long. But, um, you know, it was my first international tournament. I had never been overseas at that point. So um, just being in a team environment away from home um, and, and really prioritising our time around the games and, and stuff like that, that was a big thing for me. And I think I was 16 years of age. So I was away mm -hmm. from family, even though it was for five days. It gave me that taste to be away from home and, and play against top quality players of different nationalities. And as you know, with football, with different nationalities, there's different uh, playing styles. And, and it was different for us from Australia, adapting to um, the playing styles of, let's say, some, uh, a team from the Philippines. So mm -hmm. it was very good, great experience. Okay, yeah. good. How about Iksan? Well, it was 2011, so I would have been like 12 years old. <laughs> and for me, for me at that time, I was just all about having fun, you know, playing football. Mm. But at the same time, we were really competitive. So obviously, we want to win games. And uh, and we see like the big boys from Australia were like, hey, these guys are so tall, <laughs> you know. Huge. And, and yeah, so it, it was a good taste, like what Billy mentioned, of like international football for, for us. Um, yeah, it was it was like a first competitive international tournament almost for me and uh yeah just to, just to know different types of uh styles of play and uh meeting new people yeah i think it was for me at the time it was just to have fun and uh, enjoy international the international scene yeah great great so how about hilarious well uh for the first i'm so sorry because if my english speak is a little bit no problem but, uh, <laughs> For me, uh, Singa Cup is the best tournament because my uh, this is the first competition tournament, international competition tournament for me and my mm. team, and I get the participation two time get participation in Singa Cup in 2013 and 2015, and then in Singa Cup I I see the play football from the other countries and I can exchange my knowledge, I can explain and improve my potential after that. Uh, I get the uh, some motivation from this, this competition. I think Singapore Cup is the best competition for young football talent, especially mm. from Indonesia. Oh, it seems like everybody has got a good time remembering all this, all, all the past, like especially what 2000, 2011, that was really like nine years, good nine years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really true because I've spoken to people. So the impression of Singapore Cup given to all the 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 officials that we have met, to them, it's like Singa Cup is like a mini World Cup. That's where you have got a lot of the teams from internationally all gathered in Singapore and have that sparring for that few days. It's really a good exposure for the team. So maybe my next question now, okay, you see, so you guys have participated. Yes, so the, now we have, I have successfully brought you guys back nine years ago or even more. Right? So can you recall any memorable match goal or perhaps a moment from your participation in Singa Cup? 
maybe this time now I have uh, eight sons to go first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was a long, long time ago, so yeah. I don't remember so much. Even um, I didn't even remember that I was MVP of the. <laughs> of oh my yes, age. MVP so of the age group. Yes. Yeah, I didn't even remember that. And actually, uh, a few days ago, I was uh, looking through the the pictures on Facebook yeah. of the games, and uh, yeah, everybody looks. I was so young, <laughs> uh, but I don't recall many matches. But I'm sure uh, I, it was probably a goal that I just dribbled everybody and take a mm -hmm. shot. You know, I think that's common when I when I was 12 years old. I just do that for fun. But now it's not possible to do that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, most importantly, is have fun, especially when you play football. It started off for everyone as well. Fun, enjoyment. Yeah. yeah. So how about Hilarious? Any of that goal or moment that you still remember? Thank you for the question. Uh, for me, I can, if I can recall back uh, for a special moment for me in Singapore Cup, I think the time for participation in Singapore Cup is the, all the best moment for me. Because uh, especially in 2015, I get the trophy for the champion with my mm. team in under 14. After that, two times I get the uh, double achievement from under 12 and under 14 for the, yep. the Golden Boot Award. And then I, for uh, for me, this is the best moment, and I don't forget it. Correct me if I'm wrong, you participated in two editions. Yes. And really. on both occasions, you won the Golden Boots Award. Yes, and under 12 and under 4. Wow. It's really cool. Yes. Okay, Thank next, you. how about, oh, yes. How about Billy? Yeah, um, like I said, I had to do my research and, and look back a little bit. But there was a game that mm -hmm. we played against um, a team from the Philippines. I forget mm -hmm. their name. But we won three nil. But it was one of the the technique the, the way they were just great. They're quick. They were quick. I think our physical attributes beat them. You know, just our strength and and keeping them off the ball and that. But their technique in one v one situations that would turn you inside out. Like you, you just didn't know where to look, and that's how quick and nippy they were. But we got over the line, um, and I was lucky enough. I scored the three goals, and I remember. At the end of the game, the referee went to go give me the match ball, but someone else came and grabbed it off me and took it away, <laughs> so they didn't give me the match ball. I was like, yes, I get to take the ball home, but they're like, nah, this is not for you. <laughs> so that's a memorable moment, I guess. Well, definitely. That's the reason why you remember until now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. If, if I may just add on one more question, I'm really curious about this, the questions to three of you. So, like, I mean, let's say, I know that you guys have got great memories from Singer Cup and especially like what Billy has shared, you know, that, that moment, something that you'll remember for the rest of your life. So is there anything, is there any takeaway from that tournament that you have participated? How, um, anybody want to start first? How about Hilaris? Come, you first. Uh, yeah. I think I, I get the best learn football in Singapore Cup, but my, the best treatment for, for me is to work hard, play hard. I can see our style of football from other countries and I can see my, uh, the new, the new, family, the new friends from other countries. I think yeah. it's good for me. Cool. It's done. How about you? I think the, one of the biggest takeaways from the tournament is just meeting new types of people, new types of footballers, mm. uh, you know, having that first taste of com uh, competitiveness and, you know, just like to prepare you for future tournaments. Mm. I think it's a good thing, but also just to have fun. And it's always a fun time in Singapore Cup, you know, everybody's running around, music is playing, you know, uh, food, stalls, yeah. drink stalls. Yeah. So, yeah, that's for me. Really? Yeah. What I took away from it was, probably similar um you know just the overseas trip with friends because at the end of the day your teammates are close friends and there's a lot of them that i still speak to today and and you know going back to you know the whole process of traveling with your teammates staying in hotels obviously late nights and just being around in the group atmosphere obviously trying good singaporean food 
you know, mm-hmm. you can't beat that. And of, of course, the football as well. That was the main reason why we were there. And, and to win the actual competition, that was a bonus. So, yeah, it was great. It's really a great experience. It imagines that you're here playing with a lot of uh, good players, talented players, and at the same time, you get to visit the country. Yeah, it's really yeah. like a good tourism, good holiday yeah. as well. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. So right now, I mean, like, the three of you um, have got um, a very good, uh, uh, how, how do I put it? So you guys have uh, played a lot of football. You have great experience playing at the highest level here and there. So, I mean, we have a lot of young and upcoming players are watching this as well. So would you be able to share with us, prior to a match, how you guys prepare yourself for the game? So maybe this time around, um, it's some you want to go first? Yeah, um, how I prepare myself. I mean, I think many footballers know that preparation starts way before the game, maybe one day, two days before the game, mm. uh, just to eat right and, uh, you know, get your focus on the game, What think about what you want to do. And then game day, obviously, you know, have a good breakfast, um, keep positive, stretch if you like to stretch. Yep. listen to music, these type of things, you know, just calm down and uh, um, do things that you like. Don't don't stress about the game. And uh, yeah, I think if you're relaxed for a game and you're ready and you're positive, you're going to play a good game. If you're mm. thinking too much, then, you know, uh, it's not going to be, not going to be good. good. Yeah. How about Billy? Yeah. Um, well, I, I totally agree with everything that, that you said, like uh, in terms of, um, preparation it starts way before the actual game day so but for me i think the older i've gotten the more i've um, focused more on nutrition and so obviously taking in good carbohydrates the night before the game me personally i don't eat meat two days before the game because it just takes longer for my body to digest and i feel very sluggish coming into the game so try and eat light foods and obviously good carbs um get a good night's rest um you know good music and 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 the atmosphere in the change room is a big a big thing for me if the atmosphere is good then i think you're going to have a good game so um and obviously playing here in in darwin um it's very it's a small community so usually i try and look at the opponent the opposition and and who possibly will be marking me and try and do my homework before i get out onto the pitch so yeah. yeah, little things like that without overdoing it in your head, obviously. You don't want to try and play the game too much in your head and stress yourself mm-hmm. out. But, yeah, I think um, as as the years have gone on, my, um, my pre-game routine has changed, but it's become a lot more relaxed, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, how about Hilaris? Okay, uh, for me, the best is to return for before you go to the match. Uh, I think after you work hard and play hard in the training before the competition, I think you can uh, you, 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 you can uh, pray to God in the field. You all out, you relax, you enjoy this match. Yep. But for the most important important thing for young football player, I think the strong mentality because mm. young 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 football player have a big spirit, but if you don't have a strong mentality, fair play, respect in the field, you can go to you can if you don't go to professional career. I think all out, enjoy and respect your match. Thank you. Yeah. So generally, I think it's really like um, a good and healthy diet. Um, the preparations is not just the day before. So we are talking about a week or even months before. You are always constantly be ready for the game. It's not mm-hmm. just about the pregame here and there. It's true, it's true. So talk about that, especially football. So, I mean, like you guys are as considered as very, very young. Okay, so even Billy as well. Come on, Billy. <laughs> yeah, so who do you model your game after? So basically, I'm asking who's your idol? So maybe I'll start with um, Hilarious first. Yeah, I, I think my special, something special uh, role model I don't have because I think our football player if he can make a good performance to me he can my inspiration but I think I, I want to have a good power good suit good spirit like Cristiano Ronaldo and I want to uh, make a good 
skill, agility like Lionel Messi, and then my like personality, leadership in the field like Bambang Pamungkas, Indonesia national yep. player. Yeah. Famous think. figure. Yeah. Okay. How about Billy? Yeah, that's a that's a tough question. I mean, you can't look past Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, you know, they're great players. But there's been great players over a long period of time. Like, I remember growing up and seeing Eric Cantona and David Beckham. And I say all those players because I'm a match the United supporter. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, like, um, yeah. But I think now watching football, I look purely on the position that I play. And it doesn't matter which player it is. I tend to look at how they're playing, where they're moving, what they're doing off the ball. And I try and, um, you know, take a bit from each player and try and make it my own. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But, yeah, you can't look past Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi. They're, they're the greatest. Yeah. The target, the target that you have. <laughs> it's on. Uh, like Billy mentioned, um, actually, I just, I just look at players that are in my position and I try uh -huh. to uh, take what I can from them and learn. Um, actually, in the past, I never watched football at all when I was young. I've never, I've never liked watching football at all. So when people come to me and ask, hey, "Who's your favorite player?" I, I just say my dad because I don't know, <laughs> I don't know many like strikers. <laughs> but as I grow up, you know, it's it's actually really important to uh, analyze some some games, some strikers. So that's what I've been doing much more now in the past few years, uh, picking up. Things from like Benzema, Lewandowski, Aubameyang, um, and like sometimes I play wing, so I look at Sane and the movements of the runs, and I think this is so important. So I don't have a favorite player; I just um, analyze people that are in my position. Yeah. Oh, good. So each of you got your own strategy and uh, habit and practice of how you guys are going to model your game and who do you follow and who suits. Okay. If I may ask, if I may ask this, so um, I realize that we have been talking so much about football, your career, what you're doing. So would you be able to share with us, like, what, what are you guys busy with these days, especially football? You know, I'm just curious to know what you guys are busy with. Some of our, uh, some of our viewers over here, they are also curious to know. So how about Billy first? Yep, yep. So I'm currently playing for my uh, local club here, Down Olympic Sporting Club. Um, it's a big family history with that club, obviously being from Down myself, I've had uncles that have played for the club and it's been like a generational thing. So um, it's a club that I hold very close to my heart and I'm lucky enough to be captaining them. So um, yeah, I'm still, still currently playing um, and yeah, I'm enjoying it. You know, it's, it's definitely... Like I said, I, the older I've gotten, I'm still very dedicated to the sport and want to play at the best of my ability week in, week out. But I also work, work as well. So, mm. you know, um, and I'm married now as well. So things are a lot different, you know. But yeah, yeah still, still very dedicated to my club and, and, and hoping to, um, to win more championships with them. So, um, Ilaris, what about you? Uh, I think for me, yeah, football can make enjoy for me because in my local region in Bontang, I have uh, my good uh, motivator like Pari Usain, Indonesia legend player. Mm. He can make me to improve my potential, my skill, my dream in football. And then after that, I enjoy my uh, age now, my era. And then I want to get my best uh, in the future good good at least you have a plan in place oh good yeah so yeah. Thank you. how about your son you uh right now i'm playing for ralphos yeah. in norway in the second division in norway this is my first uh professional contract in europe so i'm excited about that um but of course i want to i want to work hard and, and and see how far i can go in europe um, because, you know, it's always easy to come back to Singapore or come back to Asia to play. But, you know, I'm really competitive and I want to see how far I can go in Europe. And hopefully in the, within the next few years, I'm building up and moving up uh, up the ladder, playing mm. for teams in a better league. And, yeah, just to be a better player in general, the best that I can be. Cool. Yeah. 
So out of curiosity, I've got actually got questions for uh, Billy and Hilarious. So how much do you guys know about Singapore football? How much do I know about Singapore football? Yeah. There was actually, now that you say that, it, this is years ago, I think it would have been in the 80s, but a team from Darwin used to actually come to Singapore and play. And they were, it, it was called the Darwin Cubs and they used to play against Singaporean teams. Mm. And actually in 2011, when I won the Golden Boot, it was some sort of suit. He was a superstar of Singapore and I forget his name, but he handed me the trophy. I got to find. Uh, is it? Yeah, son, can you answer that question? Yeah, that's my dad. <laughs> oh, really? There you go. Oh, yeah. There yeah. you go. And when I, when I, um, my, my uncles actually played against your dad. So, because when I showed them the photo of who was handing me the the trophy, um, it was him, and they actually, yeah, they knew each other. I was, I was looking at the pictures. So I'm guessing you're the tall, tall Australian guy. Yeah. <laughs> there you yes. go it's so touching yeah. memories are coming back there you go yeah so it's pretty cool that that's really nice so yeah cool so that that's your memory and your this uh how you look at singapore football yeah, yes that's definitely exactly. mr fundy Ahmad. yes he's definitely yep. an icon for singapore football there you go awesome yep. how about you uh share with me about what you know about singapore football uh, I, I think Singapore, uh, Singapore have a good system, good potential, good resource. Like Singapore make a good place for young football to improve his potential. I think Singapore get can to get the best football uh, history in the future. I think. Yeah, I mean, in fact, if you talk about Indonesian football, Indonesian football and Singapore football, we have a really a lot of. Uh, uh, rivalry and memories as well. So every time we look at the youth team from the Indonesia coming to play in the Singa Cup, well, the, the manga that they have is really different. You know, the fighting spirits that they show, the gameplay, the maturity of the game is really so different. It's really so very different. Okay, so uh, my one last question. So um, would you be able to share with me what is your football dream? So maybe I'll tell you what, let me start out with uh, Hilarious first. Good question for me, because honestly, my for me, I don't have a big dream for football because I, my, at my position now, I'm a student in the college because, but if I have a good opportunity, I want to get the back my career in uh, football because in 2016, I, I have a good uh, opportunity to trial and training in real for mm. this this moment can make motivation me to to back in the field improve my skill improve my potential and then after that i want to play with indonesian national team with garuda and then i want to sing a indonesian national anthem in gelora bukarno like that but in also outside the field i think i want to make a good system big revolution to indonesia football organization like PSSC. I want to make a good development for for Indonesia for, uh, young football player from bottom to to, to, mm. to up from young to professional career. I think Indonesia I have a good potential because I learned from my history. Uh, like now, I think Indonesia is the individual like from nothing to something like that. Yes. Thank you. Definitely. Definitely. So. How about it, son? Your my football dream. My football dream. Well, since young, it's always been to play in Europe in a in a good league, and now I'm in Europe, so I, I just need to work hard to get into the into better teams, into a better league. Uh, but my main dream is always to beat my uh, dad's uh, national team goal record. Uh, I think it's 51 or something like that. So that's that's always uh, something that's on my mind every time I play for the national team. That's, that's really all, awesome. That's all I think about is just I, I need to score every single game. I need to beat my dad. And then, yeah, Do you guys actually dream. discuss about this? Yeah, he, he told me like, oh, I think it was the last international break. I was, I was kind of on form. I scored two in two games or two in three games. And he was like, 
Ik Sang, you're doing good. If you keep going like this, you're going to beat my record. And I say, yeah, you just wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. cool, that's cool. Okay, how about Billy? Yeah, look, um, it was obviously as a young kid, your, your dream is to hit professional status. Unfortunately, I didn't. I hit semi-professional status and I, I went into state and played for a few clubs in Melbourne, Australia. And, um, but I never got to that next step for whatever reason, you know? And, and I, I sort of came back home and, and started playing with my local club here. And, and one of my dreams as a kid was to captain the club and I, and I accomplished that. So I was very happy, very happy to do that. And in my first year captaining the club, we actually won the championship. So that was, I mean, a dream that I, I, you know, it was a dream I had from a young kid, but um, yeah, um, I've played in a few FFA Cups, which is equivalent to the FA Cup in England, but it's run in obviously Australia and you get to play different clubs from around, around Australia. So that was, that was a big thing. And we got to play against Adelaide United, who was an A-League side. Yep. And um, yeah, so things like that, obviously playing against professionals um, and being in a professional environment, I've, I've done that and I'm very happy with what I've achieved in my career so far. So. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. I mean, it's really privilege. It's my privilege and our privilege to be able to get everybody here for this chat. So, you know, the memories bring back. Uh, we have been involved in Singa Cup for a long time as well. So, like, having our alumni, our old boys talking about Singa Cup is definitely bring back a different meaning, especially to this year, our 10th anniversary. So, once again, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I wish everybody good luck in your career, good luck with whatever you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.